What if I told you that you didn't have to wear a diaper every time you ate Taco Bell? You'd probably call me crazy, maybe say that I'm living in some weird what-if universe where the rules that you've learned to accept don't apply. And I would tell you, you're right. And my favorite game to play in this universe is the critically acclaimed Superman 64. Are you sure about that? I'm just kidding with you. I'm pretty sure in every universe that game is trash. The concept of a what-if scenario is interesting because it opens up a whole new world of possibilities. Like, what if Doctor Strange lost his heart instead of his hands? What if the Saiyans beat Frieza? What if Sonic 06 was a good game? Jeez, we'd probably be colonizing Mars if that happened. The question of what if is the driving force behind Capcom's zombie-infested sequel, Dead Rising 2, off the record. What if instead of Chuck Green, Frank West was the one who broke the Fortune City story? Last year, I did a retrospective of all the Dead Rising games, except for Off the Record. I thought, since it was a what-if, non-canon entry to the series, I didn't have to check it out. Boy, was I dead wrong. So now I'm here to answer the question. What if I reviewed the game that I skipped? Does it hold up against its infected brethren, or does it blend in with the crowd like another waddling meat puppet? Well, charge up your cameras and grab a pint of orange juice. It's time to check out Dead Rising 2 Off the Record. To start, Off the Record has one of the best openings to any video game ever. Even though the events are considered non canon, the opening does give an accurate description of what happens to Frank after Dead Rising 1, a question that I always had in my mind. You basically see what happens when a star who is at the height of their popularity hits rock bottom. He went from being pretty much the man of the year to going bankrupt and slumping on the couch watching TV. Damn, if that isn't a f mood, then I don't know what is. I love that he was going to conventions and signing autographs, almost like he was clinging to his sinking popularity. The real world comparisons are uncanny. Frank ends up in Fortune City where the game takes place because he saw an opportunity to stay in the fading limelight by going on Terror is Reality. From here, the story mirrors what happens to Chuck Green in Vanilla Dead Rising 2, but not exactly. Off the record changes a couple key details to keep things interesting. Where Chuck entered Terror is Reality as a motocross contestant, Frank embraces his wrestling past and steps into the ring fighting none other than the zombies themselves. So even though their stories parallel each other, it is different enough to make you feel like you're playing something new. However, at the end of the day, this game is essentially Dead Rising 2 with a few bits of extra content. I can only think of one other franchise that has done this well, but I'll come back to that later. One key difference this time around is Frank's signature camera. That's one feature that made the first game so unique that never really made a return in any other main Dead Rising game. Except, you know, the game that everyone wishes that they could forget about. Ah, <sighs> what a piece of shit. The camera in Off the Record works really well. The developers implemented it so seamlessly, it makes me wish that it was always here. You can take pictures of certain things that will give you PP to level up, giving you an incentive to look around and find some neat stuff to capture. What makes it even better is that there are different categories that you can shoot, like horror, special, and drama. But there's nothing like getting bigger PP from Erotica. Great. Plus, stopping and taking a look through the camera is a great way to notice things that usually don't stand out as much. The camera is a great way of showing just how different Frank is not only thematically, but technically as well. Anyways, after Frank has a run-in with these thoughts, uh, bloodsuckers, the zombie outbreak happens and we need to find the safe house. We have to run through a familiar hallway where on our way there we come across the green room. This is where Chuck has that, oh shit my phone isn't in my pocket feeling, but you know, with his daughter. But here, all we see is this. Wow, that is like some Dead Island trailer level stuff that's going on here. This image instantly makes your mind race around thinking about what happened to Katie and by extension, Chuck. This little moment right here is a great example of foreshadowing. I also love how the game doesn't make you go in there, but anyone who played Dead Rising 2 and is familiar with that story is 100% going to want to see what's in that room. It's great. Once Frank makes it to the safe house, we get to see a couple more familiar faces being Sullivan and Stacy. This is one of Off The Record's biggest strengths. It takes what you know about Dead Rising 2 and flips it on its head. Like when you first see Sullivan, everyone who played Dead Rising 2 would think, spoilers, that he's sus. Because you know, he's a villain in that game. But after seeing what happened with Katie, who knows what else has changed. And then there's Stacy, who pretty much stays the same, except there's just something off about her. Like, she looks a little different, but I can't really put my finger on it. Ah well, anyways, another great improvement comes from one of my favorite characters from the first game being Rebecca Chang, Channel 6 Action News. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say that. In Dead Rising 2, she essentially filled the Frank West role, being a go-getter reporter who was trying to break the news on everything that happened. In Case West, it's even revealed that she was colleagues with Frank. 
But now, since Frank is at center stage, the dynamic with her changes almost entirely. The repertoire they have with each other is really fun to watch because, essentially, they're both here to do the same thing. It seems like they're complimenting and admiring each other just as much as they're roasting each other. You used to be a kind of a hero of mine before you got washed up. Bruh. It turns Rebecca from an already good character into a great one. Speaking of great character, that's another thing that this game is filled with besides the millions of zombies. I don't mean any character specifically, but the amount of unique personality in every aspect of this game is fantastic. fantastic. It's something that I touched upon in my last Dead Rising video, but I just thought I should mention it again. Where I feel like other games would just have a survivor being all static and saying, ah, help me, there are zombies. This game has people like Lashandra who's all, yeah, I'll go to the safe house with you, but I need to find my husband first so I can kill him for being a little bitch. There are tons of interesting little scenarios all over the place. It's not like this is unique to Off The Record though. Both games are just popping with character. What Off The Record does do better than Dead Rising 2 is the handling of exploration. And this is all because of one thing, Zombrex. Sometimes it felt like having to constantly go back to the safe house to give Katie Zombrex broke up the flow of gameplay. All done, kiddo. You feeling okay? You're not my boss, old man. What the hell? You already have to go back enough without having to do that, so towards the end it really felt like a chore. And off the record though, you still need to find Zombrex, but instead for Frank. The big difference is that Frank can take his dose anywhere he is, eliminating the amount of times that you have to return to the safe house. This is perfect. Not only does it keep the original prospects of finding Zombrex and having a ticking clock to a game over, but it doesn't interrupt the player from what they're doing. Sure, you have to find the Zombrex, but that ties back into encouraging the player to explore. It's too bad that when you find people who need to be escorted back to the safe house, it can be a freaking chore. Yeah, the escorts got nerfed heavily this time around. In Dead Rising 2, you could just speedrun your way back, and the survivors will just bulldoze through the zombies. But here, I think that each survivor has like individual stats that determine how good they'll be during the escorts. But damn, it can be pretty frustrating doing some of them. But thankfully, there is a new location that you can go to to vent out that frustration. And that area is the Up Your Ass Fairground. Oh wait, no it's not. It's the Uranus Zone! This is a completely new location that was nowhere to be found in the original game. In fact, there was just nothing there in that area. It was blocked off. But now, there's a sci-fi inspired theme park filled with minigames, new outfits, and new weapons. The weapons they added fit right in with the theme, and they are some of the most hilarious ones in the whole franchise. Some of my favorites are the Laser Eyes and the Pegasus. The only downside is that you can't actually ride the rides that are here, they are used more for scenery and for weaponizing them against the zombies. Still, it's fun to get the rides to obliterate them, and to do that, Firecrackers are your best friend. Furthermore, Off The Record introduces these new security box keys that you can find hidden around the map to unlock items in the bank that's in the Uranus Zone. This is a great way to make money, which comes into play in the quest where you have to make a million dollars for TK. Overall, this area can be summed up as new, creative, and most importantly, fun. And it's a great addition to Off The Record. On top of a new zone, there are also a few new psychopaths to find. Psychopaths are some of the best parts of any Dead Rising game. Essentially, they're just bosses, but they're so fun because they show off just how differently the zombies affected different people. All the classic ones from Dead Rising 2 are here, like Randy and Slappy, but this time around we get one that is a total homage to Frank's first zombie fiesta in Willamette. As fans of the franchise know, the very first boss for many people in Dead Rising was Adam the Clown, who by the way, absolutely kicked my ass in my first playthrough. Well, now I can get my chance at revenge because it turns out that he has a brother named Evan, who, as it also turns out, wants revenge on Frank because he killed his brother. So the feeling's mutual. I love how Frank can't seem to get away from clowns, at this point it feels like they follow him more than the zombies. I also love how this is one of the only bosses in the game that has two phases. The first phase is meant to show off his furiosity and literal towering intimidation, but then it turns into a farce when it's revealed just how small he is. That's another great aspect of this game. The psychopaths are just as scary as they are funny, and this is one that shows that off really well. The other psychopath that they added though is one that isn't very funny at all, and that's because the psychopath is none other than Chuck Green. The boss fight with Chuck exemplifies just how extreme a zombie apocalypse can change someone. This was foreshadowed all the way in the very beginning when we discovered Katie's backpack in the dressing room. In Dead Rising 2, Katie was Chuck's driving force above all else. Not solving the mystery of Fortune City, not saving all the survivors, but just making sure that Katie was safe at all costs. Now that she's gone, he really can't find anything to live for. He is so distraught from losing her that he tries to substitute her with a doll. 
That is some seriously sad stuff. As terrible as this is, it is interesting because we get to see what would happen if things went down differently. Who could be the hero everyone needs could just as well be another psychopath who has lost everything. What makes this even better is that Chuck is treated just like that, like he's just another boss. He isn't the final boss or even a mandatory one, and is even a replacement for one of the earliest bosses in Dead Rising 2, Leon Bell. I also really like how his fate is left ambiguous, as after you defeat him, Frank notices that he suddenly disappears, and that is the last time you ever see him in the game, unless you play in a multiplayer session. Now, I mentioned that overall, the story of Off the Record stays the same, but it does pretty significantly diverge later on, so I wanted to talk about that. Frank and Rebecca's back and forth throughout the game sort of develops into a little romance between the two and becomes a motivator for Frank when he has to go into the underground to find out what's going on with the super zombies. When he returns with the evidence that Phenotrans, the company that makes Zombrex, is the one behind the outbreak, shit starts to go down. Sullivan comes in and starts naysaying just like he did in Dead Rising 2. For those of you who don't know, this is when it's revealed that Sullivan is one of the other antagonists along with TK. He makes this statement by shooting Rebecca and killing her, but just when that's about to happen, Rebecca gets shot, but it's by Stacy! It turns out that she was a Phenotrans agent this whole time. Before she has the chance to shoot Frank, Sullivan comes in at the last second and stops her, but then ends up getting got. This gives Frank the chance to wrestle her to the ground, but before we can catch her, she escapes because she is wearing a fucking weave! Aw damn it, that's why she looked different. I guess Sullivan was good all along. The way that he risked it for the biscuit and saved Frank made me feel bad for not trusting him and off the record. In another world, Sullivan was a good man. And also in another world, Stacy's a freaking psycho bitch! You're acting like a psycho bitch! So then Frank has to chase her down, ultimately leading to the final confrontation in the Uranus Zone. It's a pretty solid boss fight, but really, it's nothing special. Stacy just hops into a mech and you have to wail at the arms to do damage. The only cool thing about this boss is that I found this weird item that you can pick up on one of the arms. It's freaking ginormous and it has this weird icon in the item select bar. It definitely feels like something that you're not supposed to find. According to the Dead Rising wiki, it's a glitch that exists in the remaster on every platform. You can't use it and it has no purpose beyond being a novelty glitch that you can pull off, but it is still something interesting at least. Anyways, after you scrap the robot and beat Stacy, Frank again shows off that he's the biggest Chad in the Dead Rising series. Always thought you had a crush on me. Too bad I don't dig flat chicks. <laughs> Once he returns back to the safe house with the helicopter to pick up the rest of the survivors, he goes back to Rebecca's body only to find her missing. The camera zooms out, the credits roll, and the best ending song to anything ever of all time starts to play. His name's Frank. His name's Frank. For anyone who knows Dead Rising's formula, you know that what comes next is overtime. Overall, it's pretty similar to Dead Rising 2's, the major difference is that instead of saving Katie and Stacy, you have to save Rebecca. Yep, she's still alive and you have to dethrone the king to get her back. Sorry TK, but you mess with Frank, you die maidenless. No maiden! Dead Rising has some of the most replayable main stories, since because everything has a time limit, an average player will most likely not be able to do every single mission. Off the record is no exception, you can carry your save slot over into a new game and start from the very beginning. But do you know what Off the Record has that Dead Rising 2 desperately needed? A sandbox mode. Yes, a game mode where you can explore and kill zombies to your heart's content without being confined to a strict time limit. This game mode is so awesome. You can go around and do these little challenges that level you up and give you money, and you can even refight bosses. There are no escort missions and no bullshit. In fact, the survivors who are out there are actively trying to kill you. Remember LaShondra from earlier? Now instead of beating her husband, she's trying to beat you! Being able to do what you want, be it find items or outfits, or finding hidden locations at your own pace is so refreshing and is exactly what Dead Rising 2 needed. This game mode is nothing but pure fun, and its atmosphere is set up perfectly by the cutscene that plays when you first pick sandbox mode. So, Frank West, you here to get your next big scoop? No way, pal. I'm not here for work. This is my vacation! The only downside, if you want to even call it that, is that it replaces terror as reality, but good luck trying to find a match for that today. It's about as empty as Blizzard's employment line. Sheesh. I'll take sandbox mode over that any day. Off the Record is a game that dabbles in what-ifs. It's almost as if Capcom themselves asked, what if we made a better Dead Rising 2? A question that I didn't think had an answer until now. 
earlier in the video, I said that there was only one other franchise that I thought captured the essence of this game as well, and that's Pokemon. What Off the Record is to Dead Rising 2 is the same as what Pokemon Emerald is to Ruby and Sapphire. Essentially, they're all the same games, just that Emerald has that extra bit of content and flair that makes it the definitive game to play in that generation. And the same can be said about Off The Record. Upon its release, Off The Record was priced at $40, a whole $20 difference from its counterpart that was released the previous year. With a price like that and the amount of content that you get, it's a no-brainer as to which one you should grab, especially if you had the choice to choose between one or the other. When I did my retrospective on all the other Dead Rising games, I decided to skip Off The Record because it was a non canon entry into the series, and that couldn't have been a bigger mistake. If I had ranked it along with the others in the franchise, it would be at the top of S tier, right in front of Dead Rising 2. Playing it from start to finish and spending hours in the sandbox mode made me realize that Dead Rising 2 off the record is frankly fantastic. That about does it for today's video. Thank you so much for making it until the end. If you did, please leave me a comment about your thoughts. Have you ever played off the record, and if so, what did you think? If not, would you ever check out a Dead Rising game? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing as it lets me know what I'm doing right and it helps me to keep making videos going forward. If you didn't like it, then definitely leave a dislike. That thumbs down button is there for a reason. Whether you comment, like, dislike, or subscribe, you don't have to do any of those things. What you do have to do is have a nice day. Watch out for zombies and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!